I've abandoned my precious daughter in a gigantic Amazon box on your doorstep. Can you please do me a favor and look after her for a little while? She's such a sweet angel. You'll love her. What on earth are you saying? You can't be serious. You're joking, aren't you? Are you referring to a cardboard box? The kind that they use for deliveries? You didn't actually stuff your child into a box, did you? It's the peak of summer. This is Arizona for crying out loud. It's 90 degrees out there. She will be roasted by the time I get home. She could suffocate or dehydrate or get a heat stroke. How could you do such a thing? Ugh, stop being so dramatic, Presley. It's in the shade, for crying out loud. I'm not an idiot. I made sure she had enough air and water and snacks. She even has a toy to keep her company. She's having fun in there. This is a prank, isn't it? You're trying to pull my leg, right? You're filming this for some stupid YouTube channel or something. There's no way you would actually do this to your own daughter. <laughs> I am dead serious, Presley. I'm not kidding around. This is not a joke. Oh my God, I am not getting involved in all this. Leave me out of your insane plans. Go and pick her up right now before she fries to death. Can't you take her with you wherever you are going? What kind of parent puts their daughter in a freaking box in Arizona in the middle of summer? Me, I'm that kind of parent. You gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes being a mother is hard work. You wouldn't understand. I can't take care of Sophie. We've already talked about this over and over. I told you, didn't I? You cannot keep using me as your personal nanny. I have things to do. I can't be at your disposal every second of the day. Listen to you. You don't have anything better to do. You're free all day. You only have the chores to do. And your husband is at work all day. What's the problem? What else do you have to do? Online shopping and the Ladies Library Association? Don't you want to spend time with your niece? I thought you had a soft spot for her. You don't get it, do you? You have to listen to me. My word is final. I'm your sister-in-law. You are not my boss. I don't have to do anything you say. And don't try to put me on a guilt trip about Sophie. She's your responsibility. Okay, okay. You've made your point. You're your own woman with your own life who doesn't want to be told what to do. Now you've had your say. Just go home, take her out of the box, and let her into the house. As you said, it's a hot day in the middle of Arizona. You'll need something to drink. Go and pour your niece a glass of water. I still can't believe you actually put her in a box and left her. <laughs> it was just the right size for her. Take her in quickly before she spoils. Unbelievable. Now you're talking about poor Sophie like she's a piece of food left out in the fridge. What kind of mother are you? <laughs> well, what do you know about being a mother? That was uncalled for. Well, when you and Joe do eventually provide your family with an heir to their fortune, you'll probably come to learn that sometimes it is necessary for a woman to take a short break from the hardships and challenges of motherhood. Of course I wouldn't know, would I? Listen, I have to go on a trip. I can't take her with me. I'll be back in about three days. Three days? Mm-hmm, thereabouts. Thank you for understanding. Hang on a minute, Sarah. You said you put her in a box and left her on my porch, right? That's right. Right in front of your door. You can't miss it. At the address in Prescott, right? Of course. Oh my God. I told you before. Aren't you paying attention? Oh my God, this is terrible. Poor little Sophie. I'm not anywhere near Prescott right now. Go back and get her. This very minute. Impossible. We're already on the plane. Huh? What plane? Where to? 
What time did you leave her there? Duh. Prescott Regional. Ernest A. Lovefield. We are off to L.A. We left her there about an hour ago. Sarah, do you know what month it is now? August? It's not a quiz. August is scorching in Arizona. Sophie is in peril. I have to call the police. Leave the police out of it. If they get involved, I'll be in a lot of trouble. I don't have time for this. I'm calling them now. If you're gonna call the police, let's get our story straight. I heard about a kid who locked himself in a box once and couldn't get out by himself. Kids do it all the time. Worst case scenario, we can say she crawled into the box on her own accord. You are out of your mind, you selfish, crazy woman. I can't believe you're more worried about fabricating an alibi than you are about your poor little Sophie. I wonder how long she can survive in that box. I guess we'll just leave it to fate. Right from the moment she was born, her fate was sealed. The poor thing to have been cursed with a mother like you. Ugh, anyway, don't get the cops involved. You have to go home and get her. Too late. I already called 911. You promised me. Promised you what? I did nothing of the sort. You said you'd look after her anytime I wanted. That was before you started taking advantage of me. You know darn well how I feel about you using me as a daycare while you're off gallivanting around town. <sighs> Do you really want to spoil my little holiday? Do you really think you can enjoy yourself with this hanging over you? Tell your friend that you have to cancel your holiday. It's not exactly a friend. Aren't you going with the WSC girls? Not this time. Then who are you going with? Don't tell me it's a man. I'll kill you if you tell anyone about this. You are so stupid. What about your husband? What he doesn't know won't hurt him. If he finds out, I'll know who told him. You'll be dead meat. You inconsiderate, self-centered Jezebel. <laughs> Jezebel? Is that the best you can do? I have no words. I have informed the police. They're on their way. They will catch up with you. I'll switch off my phone. They won't be able to track me. You are impossible. Don't even think about telling my husband that I left Sophie at your place. Let's just keep it between us, right? I'm not going to be party to any of your vulgar secrets. The police are sure to contact your husband about this. Oh, God. Whatever. I'll be back in about three days. I'll worry about the police then. You'll be arrested. They want to arrest me for playing hide-and-seek with my daughter? That's not exactly a believable alibi, is it? I thought you wanted children, Presley. What has that got to do with anything? If you have children... My Sophie will be their cousin. Wouldn't it be terrible if their auntie was a criminal? It would be awful. But I can't let you get away with neglecting your daughter like this. Did you say I'm neglecting her? Well, I shall have to think about how to keep you from telling on me. What do you intend to do about it? I have my means. I'll have to make sure you never defy me ever again. Do as you please. I'm on my way to the house right now. You may as well go home. You don't have much else to do, do you? When I searched on my phone, my inbox was full with messages from the police on WhatsApp messages from my husband. It was a nightmare. I felt like my whole world was crashing down. Well, what else did you expect? You brought this upon yourself. 
You can't just abandon your daughter in a box and run away with some stranger. You have to face the consequences of your actions. How can I go home now? How can I face them? They will hate me. They will never forgive me. You know what would happen before you went, didn't you? You knew the risks. You knew the dangers. You knew the law. But you didn't care. You only cared about yourself and your selfish desires. It's your fault, you witch. You're the one who ruined everything. You are the one who betrayed me. You are the one who called the police and told them lies. You seem more worried about what will happen to you than you are about your daughter. Aren't you going to ask about Sophie? Aren't you concerned about her condition? How is she? She's still in intensive care, hooked up to an IV. She was severely dehydrated and overheated when they found her. She had a high fever and a low pulse. She was barely conscious. She could have died. Oh, um, okay. Is that all you have to say for yourself? Just okay? Do you have any remorse? Any regret? Any emotion at all? No, oh, I'm in shock. I don't know what else to say. So do you feel guilty about what you've done? It's all your fault it turned out this way. What? I will never forgive you for letting it happen. I can't believe you are blaming me. You did this to my lovely daughter because you despise me. You hate me enough to get me in trouble with the police. You can't be serious. Leave Sophie out of it. If you're gonna attack anyone, attack me. What are you plotting now? You put my darling daughter in a box. What a terrible auntie. You can't pin this one on me. You're the one who put her in a box and left her on my porch. I was delighted when you said you'd look after Sophie so I could spend a few days away. I believed you and you betrayed me. I can't believe you would do that to me. Just stop all of this. I fail to understand why my little brother got married to a witch like you. You are evil. You told me to switch off my phone. You said it would get in the way of me enjoying my vacation. It was all your advice that got me into this mess. I can't believe you're making me out to be a criminal. Settle down, Sarah. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put this up on Instagram. What are you talking about? I've got like 30,000 followers, you know. A story like this will go viral. I hope that they can catch you quickly, put you in prison, and throw away the key. You evil witch! Do you seriously think you can put the blame on me? It's obvious that you are the guilty one. You can't make me out to be a criminal. Don't even try to deny it. You're the one who committed the crime. This is a ridiculous situation. I am going to the hospital now to see my daughter. Then I'll go down to the precinct and make a statement to the police. I'll tell them the truth. Please don't tell lies to the police. Who's the one lying? They only have to look at our WhatsApp chat from three days ago to see who is lying. It's too late to cover your tracks now. It's all in the chat history. What history? On your phone. There's nothing in my chat history. I think you must be mistaken. Just a minute. I still have it on my phone. What? What have you done? You're trying to blame me earlier. You've lost your mind, haven't you? The chat history is gone. How did you manage to delete it all? I never deleted anything. I have no idea what you're talking about. You seem to be living in some kind of fantasy world. I think you need to pull yourself together, Presley. So that was your plan all along, was it? You set a trap for me. You need to atone for your crimes. Then no doubt your husband will forgive you. I can't believe how you are turning the tables on me. You ought to be feeling guilty about what you did to Sophie. You're a disgrace to the human race. Enjoy your time in prison. 
I'll come and visit you and bring you a nice homemade cake. Thanks a lot. I've just arrived at the hospital. I already called the police and told them everything. I think they'll be knocking on your door very shortly. I'm at the police station right now. They called me and I came down to the station willingly. You turned yourself in? <laughs> well done. I didn't turn myself in. I made a statement. I showed them the evidence. You are the one in trouble. I can't believe you are still blaming me. You are the one who left my daughter in a box on the porch. We don't have a porch. <laughs> yes, you do. You have overlooked one important detail, my dear Sarah. Uh, quit playing Sherlock Holmes, Presley. It doesn't suit you. What detail? The house we live in now doesn't have a porch. What do you mean the house you live in now? Did you move? Yes, we did. Last week. Oh, you didn't tell me that. We wanted to put a distance between us. We need some space. Where did you move to? We moved up to Flagstaff. What about your old house? There is nobody living there now. So why should I shut Sophie up in a box if I am not there anymore? And besides, it appears that you have forgotten something rather important. There is still a security camera at the entrance. Security camera? It's all on camera. You forcing your little girl into the box, then taping it up? It's a waste of time trying to pin the blame on me. Ugh, oh, damn! What has this whole performance been for? And you are lying. You are not at the hospital. I'm not lying. I'm in the intensive care unit, sitting beside Sophie's bed, holding her little hand right now. It's such a worry. How could it come to this? That's strange. Sophie isn't in the hospital anymore. She was discharged yesterday. Yesterday? I wonder whose hand you're holding. Oh, all these pale and sick patients look the same. I was sure this was my daughter's hand I was holding. Sarah, admit it. You are lying through your teeth again. You are nowhere near that hospital. You haven't even been to the hospital, have you? I'll bet you $100 you are with your boyfriend right now. How do you know? As if your vacation wasn't long enough. You are still playing around with your lover? You're obsessed with him, aren't you? So obsessed that you've lost any sense of reality. I am not messing around with another man. I have never been unfaithful to George. Is it a nice motel or one of those seedy little ones? What motel? You don't know where I am. I know exactly where you are. What? How is that even possible? When you got back from your vacation, you went home to pick up your car, didn't you? Then you drove north on Route 89 and stopped for lunch at a small cafe called Abby's Kitchen. What did you have? The pancakes or the bagels? I hear they make a killer cup of espresso there. I guess your gigolo boyfriend didn't feel like splurging on a steak lunch then? Ugh, oh, he is not a gigolo. So you admit it now? I am not admitting anything. After you left the diner, you stopped off at the pharmacy. We only have to employ a little deductive reasoning to come to any conclusions about what your purchases might have been. Who do you think you are, Sherlock Holmes? Or did you hire Magnum P.I.? We don't need to pay a private investigator to track your whereabouts. You're not exactly an expert at covering your tracks. Come on, man. My little sleuthing sister-in-law. Tell me how you know where I am. For someone so worldly, you are so dumb. Who uses their family car to mess around with another man? I would never do such a crass thing. And even if I did, I would delete the navigation history each time we went out together. Anyway, this is just all hypothetical. There isn't a GPS in our car. Oh, but there is. No, there is not. You're a liar. Your husband fitted one. 
He told me so. You think you are so clever, don't you? Give the girl a brain and she thinks she knows everything. Anyone can invent a story like yours with no basis of truth. You'd make a great best-selling author. Give Stephen King a run for his money. There is a real-time location scanner fitted too. He said he had it installed as an anti-theft device. It's all fiction. That's why we know you are staying at the Daylight Inn on 89? He said that when he fitted it. He never imagined it would come in handy to watch his wife being unfaithful to him. Where is it? I've never seen it. There is no point in having an anti-theft device that can be seen, is there? He is having a little chuckle. Are you with my husband, Presley? Yes, I am. His parents are here too. And your parents? And your brothers? The whole family is here together. What for? A game of Clue or an evening of character assassination? This is nothing to joke about, Sarah. They're all here because they are very worried about little Sophie. We are discussing what we are going to do about her from now on. Without me? Well, you aren't here, are you? We would have invited you, but you switched off your iPhone, remember? What are you going to do? You're not going to take her away from me. You can't do that. You have no right. She is my daughter. Whose daughter? Mine. Who would treat their own child like that? I just left her with you for a few days. What's wrong with that? It's not as if I abandoned her at some fire station. I left her with a responsible adult. A family member, no less. She is alive, isn't she? You left her in a cardboard box in the middle of August in the Arizona heat. Everything is wrong with that. It's a miracle she survived. It's a miracle she's still with us, laughing and playing. I'm in trouble, aren't I? Will I be taken in? You will be arrested. Your husband will divorce you. Your family will sever all ties with you. You will have to pay alimony to your husband and child support for Sophie. Sever ties? They are taking his side over mine. Their own flesh and blood? He doesn't even have any proof of me cheating on him. He's not going to believe you. I told you, we have all the proof we need. What proof could you possibly have of an affair? You were always asking me to look after Sophie. I've already talked about it to your husband. So what? That's totally normal. He wondered why you would leave Sophie with me so often and where you would be going during the daytime so often. So he looked into it. And that is when he fitted the GPS. Ugh. As I said, the GPS was already fitted as a part of an anti-theft device. He only had to look at the scanner history. Oh my God. Has he been playing James Bond to my pussy galore now? Ugh. My husband has been spying on me? Stop making a mockery out of everything. Do you realize how much trouble you're in? How could he spy on his own wife? Would you blame him for wanting to find out why his wife was being so cloak and dagger about her private life? He says he's known about it for three months. He said he wanted to divorce you but keeps putting it off because he's so busy at work. He says he was glad he could at least leave Sophie with me and blames himself for just leaving it that way without doing anything. He admitted that it was his fault then. So it's not my fault, right? I don't think so. A man should be able to trust his wife. He should be able to rely on her to look after the children. Who would imagine any mother worth their salt doing such a dreadful thing to her child? A good mother should show care, compassion, and kindness. You don't have to waste your time preaching your holier-than-thou sermons. You all appear to have made up your minds about me anyway. You may have taken the liberty to pass judgment, publicly condemn me, and convict me of a crime I didn't commit. And it was all done in my absence. How is that a fair trial? I've been stitched up. 
It's not as if I'm a child murderer. Such a minor misdemeanor would be thrown out of court by any rational judge. If everyone is there, can you tell them all to go easy on me? I don't feel any duty to do that. I don't want to help you. We would all rather see you burn in hell than lift a finger to help you after what you did to us. That's a bit harsh. The punishment would fit the crime. You don't mind having a criminal in your family? It'll be you that everyone's pointing their fingers at. It will be hard. It will be on the news too. We'll have the press at our front door. But that doesn't mean we want to defend you. You aren't even a part of our family. It's easy for you to say all those things. My mom and dad will find all this unbearable. No need to worry about them. They had a long discussion. They have accepted that you have been a lousy wife and mother and decided to move on. You guys have really been united in a weird way. I've informed the police of your whereabouts. They also have access to the real-time tracker, so don't even try to escape. They will be along shortly. We won't go quietly. We have gone already. They say that if you run away, the crime worsens. As long as we're not caught. Do you have any money? I have my debit card with me. I'll withdraw everything. I've been saving up to leave anyway. Too late. Your husband tells me there isn't anything in your account. What? He knew what you would try to do. He transferred all your savings into a different account. We had a joint account. There are no joint accounts for criminals. How can I live without any money? You are far too optimistic. Were you really planning to be on the run from the police? I feel really guilty about this. I am really sorry that I've been so brash and brazen with you. You changed your tune. He really didn't deserve it. What is this all of a sudden? I'm beginning to see the error of my ways. Just like that? Will you be a character witness when I go to court? I knew there had to be an ulterior motive. No way. Please, I can't stand the thought of going to jail. I have no intention of lying for you. There must be something good you can say about me. No. Please, I need your help. There was no air conditioning in prison. I think they do have fans and plenty of water to drink which is a little more than Sophie had. No air conditioner in this heat. Is that true? Prison is a terrible place to be, you know. It's full of nasty characters. And if one of those inmates finds out the reason you have been put behind bars, you might get beat up or even killed. Oh, shut up. I don't want to know. You need to prepare for every eventuality. You did a terrible thing to that little girl. And not many people would forgive you for harming a child. Especially in prison. Don't you ever forget that. No! Sophie was lucky to survive her ordeal. She was found in critical condition, but she managed to pull through. Her mother, however, was not so fortunate. Sarah faced serious charges for her crime. She was prosecuted under the ARS 13-3623 statute in the state of Arizona, which deals with child abuse and neglect. Her defense attorney advised her to plead guilty, hoping to reduce the charge from a class three felony of recklessness to a class four felony of criminal negligence. She followed his advice, but it didn't help much. She was sentenced to a maximum term of three years in state prison. A harsh and lonely life awaits her in a place where the temperatures can soar above 100 degrees 
or drop below freezing. She has no visitors, no letters, no contact with the outside world. She has lost her family forever. I still cannot comprehend how she could commit such a crime in the pursuit of pleasure. The divorce was finalized through a lawyer and her husband got full custody of Sophie. He was devastated by what Sarah had done, but he tried to move on for the sake of his daughter. Both sets of grandparents cooperated to take care of Sophie. They showered her with love and attention, trying to make up for the trauma she had endured. I also helped out whenever I could. Sophie has a lovely smile, but she is still afraid of dark places. She sleeps with the light on and we sit with her and read until she falls asleep. We give Sophie all the love she deserves and fill her life with happy memories. <laughs>